Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is Steve's MS22 by 3 Tom Modular. Before I'm going to tell you all the ins and outs, the history behind the MS22, um, everything that Steve or here had to do with this, I do want to just show you what a tremendous beast this is. And I've had my fair share of, well, filters on this channel, but this is something else entirely. Just look at that, well, depth, you might say. So I, I first of all, uh, before we dive into the functionality, just have a look at that. Just feast your eyes on, on the design on all of the intricacies uh, that Tom put into this beautiful module. I I still remember when I got this a few weeks ago and I immediately was impressed by just, okay, well, how is this gonna work? How does this all tie together? And I was actually a bit, well, intimidated to say the least. And um, I actually did an interview with Tom um, what was it like uh, a week and a half ago and that really opened my eyes to a lot of things that had to do with the ms22 so if you haven't listened to that interview yet i'm going to link to that either up there or down there somewhere i'm going to put a link there otherwise you can find it in the description down below uh, but those things all together i would just say well, let's dive right in because this is a fantastic filter. Just uh, strap in, make sure you get your uh, hands and feet and all other appendages inside the cart at all times uh, because you're in for a ride. Here we go. So let's have a quick look at Steve's MS-22. So one of the things I didn't tell you during the introduction is that the MS-22 is inspired or a clone, whatever you want to call it. I like to use the word inspired by, uh, by the Korg MS-20 filter. And from what Tom told me is that this actual module came to be after, uh, m well, numerous talks that he had with tech journalist Steve O'Hare. And uh, for those of you who've been uh, well watching my channel a lot or have been regular here, is that you might recognize that name as Steve O'Hare was also the well the the mind behind the <laughs> the VCO's little helper by CM Modular. So again, this is one of the great things where Steve O'Hare has um, well has truly made a legacy for for himself in well within modular. So that being said, let's just quickly run through the, um, the actual user interface that we've got here. And let's start from the bottom and work our ways up, right? So we've got your input and your output. So uh, as said, um, and I've had a lot of filters in my rack over the last year or so. Um, and this is truly one of the most intriguing filters I've ever worked with. So let me just make sure that we can all understand why that is and where that actually starts is just right up there where you have two cv inputs one for the frequency cv and one is the so-called auxiliary cv and what you can then do is you can then route as you can see by the lines on the module itself you can actually see how that then behaves. So the frequency input is not uh, a volt per octave, uh, and, but because you do have an attenu uh, uh, attenuator here, you can of course approximate a volt per octave behavior on the, well, the one at the top there, which is the low pass cutoff frequency. What you then have is if you follow the lines, so as you can see, the frequency CV, this one, does follow a line straight into the low pass filter cutoff uh, frequency. And what you then see is that there's another line running from the cutoff frequency from the low pass filter into the high pass filter, which is then, of course, 
influenced by this little switch there, which either means, okay, well, we have a 100% correlation between the cutoff frequency from the low-pass filter to the high-pass filter, a 0%, or just turning it off, that actual correlation, or a 50% relation between them. And what that actually does is it changes the, well, the cutoff frequency for the high pass filter into, well, let's, let's call it a band pass filter. So um, it's something where you can then set the actual bandwidth or the spread, and that's exactly how it's called there, uh, for that one. So that's all about the frequency CV that you've got. And then you have, of course, that normalization between the frequency CV and the auxiliary CV. So if you don't patch anything into the ACV, you'll just get the FCV value there. Uh, this again has its own attenuator and it then just travels its, travel its way upward. So the first stop is gain. So this is, of course, where you set the, well, the, the amplification or the attenuation of the incoming sound and you can immediately see that we've got a nice LED there and you can then say whether you want the ACV to do a positive or negative influence on that. So you can indeed use this as a well uh, as an LPG if you want. Uh, next stop is of course the resonance and you've got the same switch there positive or negative and then you've got your last stop and that's again at the well the high pass filter where you can say okay well positive or negative so you've got two well two modifiers for the uh, high pass filter that's both the uh, FCV and the ACV and all of the others are influenced by one uh, modulator um, that being said, let's have a quick listen and well show you what we are working with. So what I typically try and use is of course the the ONAR because I think that that's one of the staples in Eurorack for well tremendous well usability. This is the sound that we're working with. As you can see, it's a nice and sharp and not that much well um, distorted. Uh, ramp wave you might say we can also just uh, grab the the pulse wave or any any of the other waves that we might have let's just grab the ramp wave that we've got there and if we then change this just slightly so I'm just going to open up the second level on my mixer and patch that into the MS-22 and we're just going to change this around and as you can see I've got the low pass filter completely open the high pass filter completely open all of the switches are in their neutral position and all of the others are completely turned down to zero and the one thing you'll immediately well notice is you can't hear anything and that is because we need to open up the gain I typically try and keep it at around the well, three o'clock position. So as you can see, there's already a bit of coloration happening to that sound that we were working with. So what we can then do is, of course, we can start and apply all kinds of filters to this. So let's start by just giving the low pass filter a quick test. So resonance is fully down. And the one thing you'll see is that you uh, will, let me just start with a with a higher frequency so you can see this a bit better. So what you'll see is that this will actually introduce a lot of the, well, the, the lower frequencies further down the line. So it is adding a lot of color to this, even though it's a fairly clean filter on its own. And if we then introduce a bit of resonance, I'm just gonna turn this up to the 12 o'clock position. It's nice and nuanced, you might say. Let's go to the, well, let's go to the, well, 
two o'clock position. And now you start to get into that gnarly position. Let's tune this back a bit to the one o'clock position. That's nice, right? So let's then sync both the low pass and the high pass filter. So now it's 100%. So now we have a very tight band pass filter. Where you can actually just influence the, the bandwidth with. Or just make it 50%. So now you're playing with both cutoff frequencies. You can see that from the LEDs as well. Let's go back to the 100%. Now so now we've got a very shallow Crazy, right? I love that. So if we then, let's go back to the high pass filter, let's turn the resonance down and we just... As you were expecting, right? You can start and find all these nice harmonics. So this is of course extremely nice, but let's um, get something going that's not just you guys listening to me trying to um, create something with my hands let's just use a a proper sequence for this so as always I'm using the the hermit which is then clocked by the Pam's new workout there you go play with this so that's of course nice if you can play with those kind of things uh, but it's of course much nicer if you can actually, well, do something with it. So instead of just using the full proactive signal, let's just malt that. I'm using the Tesseract uh, 8x8 buffered malt. And let's use that to, on the one hand, patch that into the actual oscillator. But then also do the exact same thing and throw that into the FCV, the frequency CV. So as said, this is not a full proactive input. So you will need to do something with the attenuator there. So from experience, I can say that if you put it at the 12 o'clock position, it is already quite usable. go overboard you can all hear that it's behaving a bit too too much let's add a bit of resonance to it 
So you can start to play with those kind of things. What you can then also do is, and do keep in mind that the uh, ACV is of course normals, but what I'm now gonna do is I'm just gonna do the exact same thing as we did before, and that's just do the link between the uh, low pass filter and the high pass filter. So now I'm just doing 50%, open it up a bit further. So now you get this dynamic bandwidth um, bandpass filter essentially. Or you can just do the 100% and then you've got this static bandwidth bandpass filter. It's always a bit of a balancing act uh, with using the gain and the resonance. You can almost go as far as just opening up the gain all the way. But the resonance will get gnarly pretty quickly. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So now I've got gain all the way down, right? So the only thing we're we're listening to right now is just the self oscillation of the actual filters. So and this is something I truly love. So let's go down on gain and just add a bit of this. So, as said, that is just one thing. I'm not gonna bore you too much with that. So, what I'm now gonna do is I'm actually just gonna do a quick repatch here. So, instead of just sending a continuous well note to this, I'm just gonna patch this into the boundary, and I'm then gonna make sure that we get the gates in to that as well so that we actually get a, well, we just get a, well, a nice audio pulse that we can then work with. So here you go. This is what we're working with. Let's make it a bit longer. A bit more gain to it. A bit of resonance. As you can see, we're still getting the full proctive or the well, the uh, the pitch into this.
And you already start to hear these almost vowel-like sounds, right? And that is something that we can truly work with. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the envelope out of the boundary and use that as the auxiliary CV. Let me just open this up all the way. And let's go and close the gain. So we're now actually using the envelope in from here. Uh, we're using that to open up the VCA, which is which the gain essentially is. It's 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 a it's more than a VCA, but let's use it as a VCA. So we can then use that. Let's uh, make this a bit more nuanced. What we can also do is if we use it like that. If we then use that to add a bit of resonance to it. So I flip the switch so it's now going to positively influence the, the resonance. And as you can already hear, that this is already too much. So if I then were to uh, grab something that's a bit higher frequency than an LFO into the FCF, we might actually get something that already starts to sound like a vowel. Hmm, that might be not be the the best approach there, but let's uh, grab another one. I'm just going to grab a quick LFO. I'm just grabbing that. Give me one second there. Again, just a nice expose on that. 
So I think that I've been focusing enough on the MS-22. Let's use this to create a nice bit of noise.
So and that's the MS-22. Let's go back to the studio and let's wrap this up. Talk to you in a bit. So I truly hope you really enjoyed this video on the uh, Steve's MS-22 by 3 Tom Modular, who I do have to thank for making this unit available to me. Um, as always, uh, Tom didn't have anything to say on this video, uh, but I can go totally go well, above and beyond actually just recommending this module. If you have a chance to pick up an MS-22, uh, please, for everything that is holy or uh, good or, well, sacred to you, pick this up ASAP. Because I think that this is one of the most comprehensive, um, also, you might say, uh, least forgiving filters I've ever worked with but that is of course the overall approach to this thing is it is it is not forgiving um you will go out and you will you will wipe out uh but once you get the hang of this filter it's going to become your best friend absolutely without a doubt so um that being said, I'm not going to make this any sort of commercial, uh, but I do make sure that I want to be absolutely clear that this is by far one of the favorite things I've ever worked with. So that being said, I do want to thank everyone for uh, tuning into this episode. I do apologize for taking a bit longer than uh, usual between episodes. The last couple of weeks, we had some things going on, um, but... Other than that, I would say thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Make sure that you like and subscribe. If you've got any questions, feedback, that's the only way I can grow. Uh, just drop them in the comments down below or reach out to Jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl. Uh, for now, um, the world is a crazy place right now. So uh, I do want to go and say and state all of my support to all of my friends out there in the Ukraine or everyone else that might be impacted by the current situation. Uh, let's make sure that um, make sure that um, more intelligent minds prevail, right? And um, please stay safe, stay healthy, uh, which is probably has got a different connotation to it than a couple of weeks back but uh, that being said stay safe stay healthy and i truly hope to see you for my next video cheers